Brock uh, chooses Samsung and a Samsung foundry over TSMC and IFS. Uh, we talked about this last week uh, when we were talking about this cool uh, performance on Llama. But uh, Dan, what's uh, what's up here? Two in a row, two weeks in a row talking Grok. Well, look, I mean, the the originator of the LPU. The LP? LPU. Is that, that a record? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Processing units. I think, I think they're, you know, we remember how much credit we gave Jensen when he came up with the DPU? Yep. Even though um, I'm pretty sure that uh, you know Marvell pioneered that more than 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 Nvidia did. Um, hold on. Oh. Anyway, oh. I'm sorry. I had my alerts on, but uh, even though that happened, and then of course, um, you know there are some other companies that are building chips for processing large language models, but Grok has been uniquely focused on being able to to do that. And last week we talked about some of the advancements the company had made in terms of the tokens per second per user. This week, we're talking about the company making a decision to do its manufacturing and to partner with Samsung. Now, Pat, that's not oftentimes what you hear from a Fabulous uh, Semi designer. Um, but, you know, Pat, I think this is, a, uh, this is an example of interdependence. I think uh, Samsung you know, sees uh, Grok, and I believe it also... Um, was it Tens Torrent that it also announced something with recently, Pat? I, I, I so, yeah. I think so. Um, I think they're looking at, you know, AI, HPC, uh, data center solutions and trying to, you know, increase their relationships. And Grok is showing some really strong performance. Um, and they've decided to lean in with Samsung Foundry. You know, Pat, we've talked about this a little bit with like the NVIDIA and what's going on with AI and how a companies like AMD could end up winning and how Intel could end up winning. Well, same with Grok. I think... You know, Grok here is making a strategic decision to partner with a company um, that sees value in its business, that's willing to uh, be a bit, probably a bit more flexible on its terms, um, invest into the relationship and help uh, a company like Grok that has a strong capability to innovate and disrupt and at least uh, help fulfill this surging demand for AI um, using Samsung's capacity. And so, you know, to me, it's really straightforward. And if I'm Jonathan Ross, CEO and that team, I'm, I'm looking for a company that's willing to invest uh, with me in the future and that's willing to give me the capacity I need. And Pat, I, I can't speak as much to what Intel maybe could or couldn't have done here, but I think TSMC probably doesn't have the same need or demand and probably giving up the, uh, the kind of term and obviously the volume commitments to a company like Grok could have been very challenging. So I think with all that in mind, Grok found a partner that was willing to play uh, within its constraints, within its expected revenue and uh, capacity and, and, and volume. Um, and I think Grok, as we've said, and we're both uh, investors, so I think it's fair that we disclose that. I think for Grok, it's, it's very important that they kind of focus on the partnerships that are gonna enable them to hit their growth marks, um, as cost effectively as possible with the global capacity and scale of someone like Samsung, it's a it's a good win win. Yeah, good analysis there, Dan. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably take it from a maybe a little bit of a tech perspective uh, and maybe talk a little bit about the the relationship there. But um, the reality is is that picking a foundry partner is more than just you know who has the best process, the bleeding edge. Uh, a lot of it comes down to uh, relationships. Samsung made an investment uh, in that. And quite frankly, TSMC is very hard to work with if you're not a top five uh, semiconductor uh, player. And even when you're a top five, they're difficult because what you're competing with are companies like Apple who are paying TSMC billions of dollars up front for reserved uh, capacity. But Architecturally, I don't think that uh, Grok has to have a bleeding edge from, from TSMC. In fact, um, you know, their architecture, it's more of an ASIC than it is a GPU. And as we talked time and time again on this show, um, ASICs are a lot more efficient than a GPU at doing training and inference. Now, a GPU is more efficient than a GPU, uh, sorry, a CPU. 
Uh, and I like to look at that kind of at the, you know, the, the, uh, the overall wave of programmability and, you know, FPGAs uh, fit in there uh, as well. So it makes sense to me, right, where uh, Samsung, or sorry, Grok might only need six nanometers, uh, which is what uh, NVIDIA was on in their, in their last, um, I think it's the, uh, the A100 was on six nanometer uh, to, to make, um, to be successful because they have the, the efficiency of an ASIC to overcome that. Like we saw with Llama, uh, and what they're doing, uh, on that, I think it was a 70 billion, uh, parameter model, um, a lot less expensive than what you need uh, to get done, which makes perfect sense. Good stuff. Congratulations uh, to Samsung Semiconductor on that one.